deflation in real estate deflation is coming everything is gonna go down you've heard that before right you came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you we've been told that deflation in real estate is just around the corner we've seen some of it in some places there's no question how about rents though well if you look at it back in history there's only one instance of rents coming down and it was just a small amount so what does that tell us for the future right here right now we're going to cover that i'm going to tell you what's happening inside of the real estate industry going from commercial real estate to residential obviously you do know that mortgage rates are still very high though we have come off the top why is this the case well the federal reserve after keeping interest rates super low for super long decided to increase them in order to stop inflation from getting out of hand and although it has gotten out of hand they feel that this is enough and they're not necessarily likely to increase interest rates anymore from this point on and so for the vast majority of people they have to deal with the current rate of inflation and then the additional inflation that will be applied each and every year from here and beyond. We've been told there's deflation, but where is it? Let's begin. Here it is. Looking at this, roughly 82% of respondents in a Credit Karma survey conducted uh, by the Harris Poll say that the country is grappling with an unprecedented housing affordability crisis. Another three in five who've never bought a home don't think that they will ever be able to do so. The dream of home ownership is long gone you know, increasing interest rates and mortgage rates and so on well what has happened here there's no question about this is that the united states as well as canada uk and other places will become if they're not already will become renter nations it doesn't mean everybody's going to rent but you're going to see a lot of um real estate that is sort of mixed use where you have a big tall condominium on the bottom, you have the retail space. Then you might have, you know, some offices and so on, uh, you know, one or two floors in there. And then you have a big retail uh, or a big residential establishment on top of that. And that's generally the way things are moving. You pack them in densely. So you have live, work, and play all within a very small 15-minute city. How does that sound? Well, this is what's happening right here and now it's becoming prohibitively expensive to own a home because if you're going to pay let's just say three thousand dollars a month on rent and three thousand dollars a month on a mortgage you might say well i'd rather own a home yes but you also have to have a million dollars on your down payment or five hundred thousand on your down payment depending on where you're living you can't get by on you know what we used to see people would be paying you know a hundred thousand dollars down and i could afford a home that doesn't happen anymore you, you can't save right now if you've got nothing or very little there's no doubt that you can't save up to the point where you can afford a down payment you can afford first and last month's rent though and so that's what's happening but there are some beautiful places out there that offer you everything people could want a big pool beautiful grounds that are manicured they've got security they've got everything so it's not necessarily a bad thing now at the same time the younger generation many of them have said i don't even want to own a home i don't want the responsibility i want to live in a pod have you seen those my goodness they don't want any of that and so Look, if that's what they want, that's fine. They don't want to own a car. They don't want to be able to drive. The delay, there's a delay right now in people getting their license. Young people don't have a desire to do what those in the previous generation did. So we can see the change in habit, the change in attitudes that are clearly present. You could blame it on TikTok. You could blame it on anything, but that's what's happening. Okay. So when we know that, that changes the course of the economy. So keep that in mind, okay? Here we have the average fixed mortgage holder in Canada is still only paying 2.85%. Now, the market rates currently are at 5.35%. And actually, in a lot of cases, it's more than that, okay? So the problems right now in Canada, this applies to other places, is not even there yet. 
So what they're saying is, no, you got to cut interest rates. You got to cut them now. You got to get those mortgage rates down. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There's just one problem. It's that if they bring it down, you are going to see additional inflation. And that is, of course, my thesis. Falling rent is extremely rare, and yet economists keep expecting that. That's the wild thing. I mean, I hear this all the time. And it's just unfounded. Why do we keep hearing about falling rent? Why do we keep hearing about falling prices in general of anything, any prices of anything, when you rarely see deflationary events? Rarely. I've talked about a collapse, but know that when I talk about collapse, that's not down in you, most cases. Yeah, you can you can have a deflationary event, but the result of that is is up. But not in a positive way. It's not a nice, smooth, like what I would say. I wouldn't call it inflation if it was a nice, healthy stair step up in asset prices. It's not like that. It's crashed down. It's crashed up. It's excessive. This is not healthy. That's what you get when you create this central bank policies. And it makes me upset. But I'm going to keep my calm right here. Okay. Falling rent is extremely rare, right? Look, look at the data. Like this is the chart. This is from Mish Talk, and I, I, I want to show you this because housing units completed versus a percentage change in rent. And while we have seen, um, you know, a, a dip once before, yeah, that's for many different reasons. Um, but it was just shock and awe during that period of time, right? Big time. But what happened with the price? Nothing, really, when you think about it. So the same scenario could be expected many times over, that rents could go flat for two years. They could go flat. But in the end, where does it, where does it end up? It ends up higher. It ends up higher. And that's the crazy part, is that you have people who can afford first and last month's rent, maybe, but they can't afford that down payment. If Think about this. This is the crazy part. We keep hearing about the Airbnb and all this. That, yeah, that's going to create this huge glut of inventory. Maybe. We'll see. But let's be honest here. If prices of real estate came down by 50% from today's prices, by many metrics, it is unaffordable. Now, that to me is wild. Do you expect real estate to crash by 50% or more. And I'm talking about nationally. I'm talking about in whatever your country is. Do you expect the prices to come down by 50% in the major cities in the United States, in the major cities of Canada, and, and so on? If you do or do not, please put that in the comments below. Let's see. Let's, let's compare that. You're going to look through the comments. You're going to compare. You're going to comment on those comments. We'll thumbs up. We'll, we'll all be in this one, okay? Let me know. Because it would be very unusual historically to see that happen. And if it does, it's still unaffordable. I mean, that's the bubble that we are in. I'm not saying there's not a bubble. It is a huge bubble. It's crazy. And by the way, yeah, this is just examples of the REIT Real Estate Investment Trust. Both of them are suspending their distributions. Yeah, we can't deal with this right now. We got some problems. Uh, yeah. Okay, why? Because the way a real estate investment trust works is that they have to constantly be paying out, constantly. Whereas you'll have some others that will lock you in. Okay, if you deal with a syndicator, the syndicator will basically say, when I think it's right, I'm going to sell and you get the proceeds. During that period of time, you might get your distributions, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm the one who decides when to sell. For a real estate investment trust, they're constantly just selling properties, buying property selling properties constantly they get a flush of cash they go out and buy a property is it the right time to buy maybe not but they're going to still buy a property anyway oh they need cash okay we're going to sell a property is it the right time to buy it's not they're going to sell it anyway that's the problem with these real estate investment trusts so yeah they can get you a you know a good return sometimes but also they can get you a terrible return as well as the fact that you don't know when you're going to get or not get your distributions when times are tough Okay, so be careful on real estate investment trusts. A lot of people, and if you read Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins, he gets into um, talking about the retirement accounts, old age homes that the real estate investment trusts 
uh, they get into. Look, you got to read that book. But uh, I think I might have that in the link in the description under my favorite books. But anyway, um, that is the one that I think is for people to you know, understand like where are we headed here where a lot of people are going to need those services as they move from the baby boomers move into the old age homes. That could be something for a period of time. It becomes very attractive. Check that out. Okay. This right here is just showing us when we look at commercial real estate, commercial real estate has suffered much more than residential real estate. And that's what these charts depict right here, okay, in terms of prices, in terms of development, in so many uh, ways, and obviously with office real estate. Out of office, global office space vacancies are at a record high. Crazy, right? And this goes globally, you can see that. There's no question about it. But in, in places where there's just too much to begin with, of course, you're going to suffer as a result. Okay, California landlords struggle to make ends meet after the eviction moratorium ends. It's been going on for a while. Landlords are taking a beating. And these are small-time landlords, okay? We should be supporting, in many cases, the small-time landlords so that Blackstone doesn't buy them all up, okay? That's not what we want. We want the small-time landlords, hopefully, that they are not bad landlords. Real estate industry trembles over commissions on home sales, though this is one. I've got friends that are real estate agents, and uh, this will hurt if their percentages come down for them. But at the same time, what maybe they want is like, hey, I don't want to be spending a hundred grand on, on some commission. I don't want to be spending 50 grand on a commission, uh, you know, for the home when they've done like theirs is a percentage basis and it gets gets crazy. And of course, Suddenly, you don't want to move because of the closing costs associated with it, right? Okay, look, if you need some assistance, you need a CFP, you need a fiduciary, you need somebody to sit there and help you, well, that's why I linked up with Money Pickle, okay? Money Pickle gets you out of that pickle. That's the idea behind the name. And what you got to do is connect with them. You get a free 45-minute call with them where they are told they have to help you. If not, you tell me. Okay, and I will have a talk with them personally. Okay, that was the rule that I set up when I uh, agreed to partner with them. I said there cannot be a sales pitch. Okay, that is not what this call is about. This call is about helping people. They said, yes, absolutely. So you give me feedback. And by the way, the feedback I've received so far has all been positive. I want you to check this out. Don't procrastinate. Get on there. You click in it. You go make um, a um, an appointment with them right on the page. It's right there. Click the link in the description and you'll see it for yourself. Now, I want to get to the comment of the day. I love comment of the day every day. I don't know one person who still has their money in the bank. If you do, good luck. And that's the circumstance with a lot of people. They're taking their money out of the banks and they're parking it in other places. And I want to know, are you part of that circumstance dealing with this? You're, you're saying, you know what? I don't trust that bank. I'm going to put it in a money market fund. I'm going to put it in a stock market. Or maybe I'm going to put it under the mattress. What's the case, right? I don't need to know what you're doing. I'm just wondering, are you those people who have said the bank's they're not safe. I want to know what you're thinking. If you're around here, still here, hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. When you do so, you are telling the algorithm, hey, check this guy out. So I appreciate when you do that. And of course, tune in tomorrow because I've got some really good information you don't want to miss. Take care. See you then.